Why, through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing of them and all men. And by their prayer for you, who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Hallelujah. The two readings are talking about gifts. Yesterday, our pastor Kofi explained the word meaning gift. And he said that gift or a gift is an act of bestowing a favor or an item on another person without expecting anything in return. Exactly. A gift is giving favor or something, an item to somebody without looking forward to see that that person will bring something in return. That is a gift. But it's unfortunate, we Africans, our gift giving, giving is different. <laughs> but I give you, you must give me. Is that not it? Yes. Well, that is not the meaning of, of gift. When you give, take your eyes off. And if you need something in return, look forward unto the Father who has no service of Hallelujah. Amen. The first reading we read was written by the presiding elder James. Yesterday we learned also that James who wrote this book was not an apostle. And when we preach to you, you have we want you to know the Bible. No. The Bible was not written only by apostles. We have two people in the Bible who were not apostles, but they wrote some letters. And one of them is James. His name is Presiding Elder James, who was the presiding elder of the church in Jerusalem. He wrote this book. Now, why did he write this book? The converts or the believers around the world but that time were suffering from, uh, how do you call it, persecution. They were being severely persecuted. So this man took his time to write a comforting letter to them. And without wasting my time, even he spent about one second to greet them. When you open the book, he just said greetings. That was all. Because he was serious about what he was going to write. Then he told them straight away that count it all a blessing when you face temptations. Is it not difficult? Sometimes when we meet temptations, we sit down to make calculations. When we meet temptations, you take your time to sit down and plan what you are going to do. Now spiritual arithmetic is of value. The arithmetic of the Bible is also very important. And none of us can afford to ignore it. But James invites us to count. At all joy when you fall into a temptation. Christians, count it all joy. Count it. One, two, three. Yesterday I fell into this temptation. The other day I fell into that. You yeah, count it. But when you count it, 
counted as joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Why is he saying this? Why is he saying this? Now, what we normally count is when we count it as joy. That is, when we escape temptation and so when uh, somebody says evil things, bad things about you, maybe you are head of a, an organization and people will talk bad about you. We will not have done anything. So when your other, uh, the other big men investigates your case and they set you free, then you begin to rejoice. Oh, they didn't do anything. They couldn't do anything. Those people, they are ashamed. You count that as joy. But the presiding elder is saying that when you fall into that temptation, count it joy. Not the result, but the temptation itself. Count it joy. Hallelujah. Do you see Christianity? <laughs> count it joy. Now, James is telling us to count testing as a glorious opportunity of proving our faith. Just as automobile manufacturers know that the best proof of the car's worth is the road test. When you manufacture a car and goes out to be tested and fails the test, it means your car cannot be sold on the market. So when these people manufacture these cars, their automobiles and everything, they take it to a place where they have to test it. And after the test has been conducted and it is proven to be okay, then you'll be in a joyous mood. And James was likening this to Christians. But when you fall into a temptation, count it joy. Why do we need to come to joy is not the desire itself, but what it will work out. Amen. Do you understand me? The reason why this man is telling us that count your temptation as joy is not the desire itself, but what? What it will work out, the outcome of the desire. The purpose of testing is that God makes our trials the instruments of blessing. When God tests you, sometimes we, we say God does not. God tests. I will talk about that. God can test you. And your own character, your own nature also can test you through Satan. Sometimes our trials bring impatience. But God will provide grace from above that his real purpose will be accomplished. When you are tested as a son of God, God will allow the trial or the temptation to come, to happen. He will allow that. But what is important is that God will not let you alone to face the temptation. The Bible says he will open a way somewhere. So if you take your time, if you take your time, God will show you a way out. But sometimes when we face temptations, that is where our impatience grow. We fight, we do this. We do, uh, listen, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Now, uh, uh, when we, I went to Holland last week. Somebody told me, listen, very good, listen. Somebody told me that somebody from Brussels here, no, uh, uh, Belgium, not Brussels, Belgium, has called them there, telling them that this uh, uh, national head, when he came, he has asked us to pay 300 euros. Where you don't know what you are going to do with it. <laughs> See you allow the things that we hear. And as a leader, if we hear it, 
And I, but I thank God for that. Because it is a temptation. I have to thank God for that. Knowing very well that God will work something out of it. Unfortunately for that person, where he was calling, those people know me very, very well. And so the husband of the lady said, Sister, if these are the things you want to break into this house, be very careful, for we know that man. He will not never take your 300 euros for nothing. He will never do that. Hallelujah. Amen. So, God himself, he will work something out of the temptations. And God makes our trials the instrument of blessing when we take our time. Hallelujah. Sometimes our trials place impatience, as I've said. But don't forget that time is nothing with God. For a thousand years, it's like one day. Amen. And one day is like a thousand years. So when you fall into a temptation, be patient for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For God will never allow that temptation to kill you. You may think it is too long. But before God, it is not. It is not. God will work something out. God will work something out. When we read the chapter 1 verse 14 carefully, we shall see that testing of character comes from God. But temptation to evil never comes from him. But from the adversary through our own corrupt nature. Testing of character. When you are a Christian, when the moment you call yourself a Christian, God will test your character. You want proof? You want me to prove that to you? Let us read Genesis 22, verse 1. Somebody to read it. God will prove, test your character. If really you are a Christian, that is character. God will never tell you with evil. Never. Yes, who is there to read for us? Genesis 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sister. Yes, there's somebody with you. Yes, go ahead. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to oh, him, Who tested Abraham? Oh. Mm -hmm. What did he say? He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sister, it's okay. Thank you. Amen. God said to Abraham, Take your son, and your only son. Take him to that mountain. Go and sacrifice him for me. What was God saying? God was testing the character of Abraham. Abraham did it. And when Abraham attempted to do it, God did something out of it. When you read further, the Bible says, Then an angel spoke from heaven. Two times the angel spoke. Abraham, now that I have seen that you love me and you fear me, don't touch the baby. Don't touch the boy. Look, there is a sheep for you. Go and use that. And then the next time the angel spoke again that Abraham, because you have done this, now I am going to make you great. Amen. I will multiply and multiply you. When you, when you get them, read the 23 and you will see this. Another testing was in Psalm 105:19. Somebody to read that. Psalm 105, verse 19. Every gift and a perfect gift. We shall come to that. These are all comedies. So do go ahead. Yes, J, uh, that is Psalm 105. Who is there, please? Who is there? Do you She said, You are there. Yes, it's nice. Until the time that his word came true. Until his time that his word came true. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh's word proved him true. And Yahweh proved him true. 
The king sent and freed him. No, no, no. I, I want another, another version. Says uh, until the time that his word came, mm -hmm. the word of God tried Joseph. The word of God tried. Another version. I want a word. There's a, a, a word. Until the time that his word came to pass, mm -hmm. the word of the Lord tested him. That is also good. Yes, I don't know. Um, he foretold him to pass. Mm -hmm. So the word of the Lord moved him. Moved him to do. Different verses. Does anyone have NTL? The New Living Translation. The, the Bible says, God tested his character. That word character is there. That's the word I, I want. And, and anybody? Have you read the King James? King James. Okay. What I'm trying to say is that before the word of God came to pass, now God has prepared something that there's going to be a famine and my people will be in danger. So God prepared somebody to take leave. He must go to uh, Egypt first for his, the whole people will come there. Now look at the dreams that Joseph had. There we are reading his talking about Joseph. Look at the, the, the dreams he had. I'm going to make you big, even bigger than your parents. That's what God told him. So Joseph was there. And the Bible is saying that before the words that God has said will come to pass, uh, uh, I have got the, the character to read it. Praise God. Psalm 105, verse 19. Mm -hmm. The NLT version says, the NLT. Until the time came to fulfill his word, mm. The Lord tested Joseph's character. The Lord tested Joseph's character. Amen. 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 If you call yourself a good Christian, one day, one day, one day, God will test your character. Yes. Test your character. So a woman gave him scholarship. Joseph, you are nice boy. Now listen to me. I am and this nice lady we have buried for 30 years. Amen. And that was, that fell on the 12th, 12th, uh, 2017. We got buried on 12th, 12th, 1987. And then I, I called the children and told them that go and pray for your mama. The mama was chasing me. He wanted, she wanted to bury me. <laughs> so that the children were laughing. She was chasing me. <laughs> I have to agree. I said, okay, then if you want me, I will agree. <laughs> Who chased you? Did you chase me or I chased you? I chased you. I forgot you. <laughs> the lady wanted Joseph to lie with him. And Joseph who was a real Christian said to the lady, Look, everything in this house, your husband has given to me. Even your husband doesn't know how this house is being run. Everything in here is under my care, except you. Because you are his wife. Why do I have to do this? To commit a sin against God. No. Is mine. I cannot judge you. I cannot do you anything. But there's someone who can do something to you. And that is God. So Joseph said, why should I do this? To sin against God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when we read the one and the four thing carefully, we will see that God tests character of God's people. And sometimes Satan himself will use some temptation through our own corrupt nature. What you have been thinking about is no good. The things that are running in your head, they are not good. And when Satan sees that, this man is thinking evil. He will come and help you. He will come and help you. The other day I was saying uh, something at the funeral that when, when, when you want to drink, drink uh, the strong drink when it comes to your mind that you want to drink that moment Satan will come in and tell you yes it is good you drink because when you drink you will be 
one so brave. You will not fear anything. You won't fear anybody. Even you are in loss, you can insult them. <laughs> so go and drink. And then surely you go and drink. And you go to your in loss and you insult them. So the next day, when everything is coming, you go to your in loss. And your in laws say, Brother, I don't need you in this house. I've taken back my daughter. He said, what, what happened, Mama? You yesterday you did that you did that. Me? Yes, you did it. So our own nature will call Satan to test us. But when we read it carefully, we may know where exactly to lay blame of temptation. Sometimes when we face temptation, then we put it against God or against Satan. But sometimes it's not Satan, it is God. Sometimes it's not God, it is Satan. When it is Satan, then it is you yourself. It is you yourself. But the moment you plan evil, he will come and help you. Satan can never use you if you don't allow yourself. He can never use you. If the woman had not planned to eat the fruit, if the woman had not stretched the hand to, to, to bring down the fruit, Satan can never have done that. But Satan said, oh, it is good for you to eat. Look, it is beautiful. And the woman said, yes, it is beautiful. So she went there and then, <coughs> and This is what we are facing today. It's not because of the woman. We are all involved. When the woman brought it home, we also ate it. <laughs> so we are all part of it. Hallelujah. Amen. So instead of wrong things coming from God, we find that only good and perfect gifts come from God, from the Father of light, who never changes. When we read that, we said, He is God of light. God never changes. But what He has created, He changes them. God is continually changing the things he created, but he himself will never change. Look, some few months ago, a few years ago, about 10, 15 years ago, you were a nice lady. When everybody says, oh, young girl. But today, how, how, what are they calling you? Oh, lady. Means, things are changing. Come wear high heels. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember when we were in school, I could run continuously for about 15 kilometers non-stop, but today. <laughs> That's why I say I love how these people, how they dance. When they were dancing, I wanted to join them, but I was afraid. <laughs> but you give them 10, 15 years, they will never come here. Things are changing. God will continue to change things. Hallelujah. Our God is a God who loves to give. Once there was a king called Alexander the Great, this king could give and give and even give himself. And there was somebody who was so overwhelmed with what this king was doing. He was overwhelmed. But the king told the guy, look, I give as a king. I give as a king. So God gives as God. And what God gives is perfect and perfect. Hallelujah. Give us a king. Give us a king. Now, it is hard to behave wisely when you fall into temptation. But God's wisdom he provides will help you do it. Now, when you take your time to read that uh, chapter 1, he was telling us about the gifts of God. There are many, 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 many gifts from God. And what he was speaking, uh, speaking about it was that when Somebody lacks wisdom. Pray unto him. In fact, when you don't have wisdom, you can be a good Christian. Wisdom. When you fall into temptation, that is where Satan will advise you. Go and insult him also. Go and fight him also. Go and kill him also. Go and send him to court. Go and do that. Go and do that. Go and do that. But the elder James is telling us that. During temptation times, take your time, sit down, pray to God that he will give you wisdom to act. Amen. If you are not careful, you will act foolishly. 
like what I was telling you. The moment I go to bread job, then I said, hey lady, you went and told this lady that this did no. No, I will not do that. I will not do that. Hallelujah. Amen. So wisdom is very, very important in the eyes of God. So if you want wisdom, young ones, young ladies and young men, if you need wisdom, cry unto the Lord. Amen. For it is a gift he will give you freely. In times of trial, when you are wronged or insulted, ask God how you shall act. It is a gift from Him. Wisdom is a gift from Him. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that gives all men freely and it shall be given. When you ask Him, He will surely give you. Did it ever occur to you to thank God for temptation? Do you think of your temptations as blessing? James says, Blessed is the man that endures temptations. Count it joy. Mm. Count it joy. I'm going to explain myself. Let us look at this man, Daniel. Daniel had done nothing wrong. The only thing he did was that he prayed unto God. And some people call it a taboo. Why should you pray unto God? And because of this, Daniel was arrested and put into a lion's death to be killed. When they put him there, in fact, this is a temptation. Big temptation. If I were Daniel, I would have struggled. I would have made a complaint. Why should you put me in a, a lion's den? What have I done? Is it a praying a sin? I have not spoken against the king. I have not taken anything of the king. I just prayed unto God. Even I prayed for the king. That the king should live for long. Why should you put me? But they put him there. And Daniel did not speak. The reason is that in his chambers he asked the Lord, Lord, provide, provide a gift now. And what gift was he paying for? A gift of deliverance. Hallelujah. It's a gift. Deliverance is a gift. Salvation is a gift. Money is a gift. Even your, 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 your strength to work when you read I put, I put something here. I, I, I'll take time to read it. So they put Daniel there. And when they put him there, the Bible says, God sent his angels to go and tighten the mouth of the lions. Although the lions were hungry, they couldn't eat Daniel. The next day, the king came. Daniel, are you there? Has that so-called God, has he been able to deliver him? And Daniel says, yes, Nana, I am here. King, I am here. In the night, my God sent his angels to come and rescue me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. After all that, the temptations are not what you are going to write, but the outcome. What your temptations will bring. Let us read that and see what, what, what happened. Daniel chapter 6, 25. Something happened there. The result of a temptation. When you are tempted, God will use that and bring a good result. Somebody to read that for us. Daniel chapter 6, verse 25. Yes, who is reading? Yes, sister, go ahead. If you Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Chapter 6, verse 25. Daniel chapter 6, verse 25. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples. Mm -hmm. listen, he, listen very well. The king wrote to everybody. Mm -hmm. Nations and languages. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. in, in all the earth. Now let me read for you. Peace be multiplied to you.
to you, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and is steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. Hallelujah. Amen. When Daniel was not killed, when that big temptation came over him, and when Daniel prayed unto God for the gift of God, who does the deliverance? Now look at what the king is saying. I now issue a decree. I now issue a decree. Brothers, when we become wise enough, when we take our time during temptation to glorify God himself, the result of the temptation will be that a decree will be used. Amen. Now I decree that everyone on this earth must fear the God of David. And Daniel. There is another one. Same Daniel book. I think they said something. When Abednego was put into the fire, Abednego and his friends, it is also there. Uh, I think 14. Daniel chapter 14. Something also happened there. Is it 14? Uh, 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 Daniel chapter 3. No, it's chapter 3. Let's go to chapter 3. Verse 28. Daniel chapter 3, verse 28. Now, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servant who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language, who speaks against a mess, uh, who speak anything a mess against the God of Shadrach, Mesa and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone who will speak against the God of Shadrach and Abednego, why is the king? These are two different kings. The first king was King Dari, and this is Nebuchadnezzar speaking. That wicked king. This is what he said. He has taken uh, down, uh, down, uh, 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 this, these three people, Shadrach and his friends, they have taken their time. When the temptation came, they asked the gift of God. Oh, Lord God, come to our rescue. Come to our rescue. This is what the king and his people are doing. They don't want us to live a righteous life. But for us, we shall worship you and you alone. So, oh, Lord God, Show them that you are the real God. And the Bible says, when they were put into the fire, I don't know, it was rain, water, there, or there was air condition there, I don't know how God did it. But what we have learned from the Bible is that even smoke, smoke, we cannot even hear the scent of smoke uh, 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 of them. So when the king went there too, this time the king also went there, because he knew the people are finished. But when he called, they said, Kid, we are here. <laughs> we are here. Oh, that we shall demand the gift of God, the perfect gift of God. This is a gift. When you read this, you may think that he's talking about Jesus Christ. No, he's not talking about Jesus Christ. He is really talking about the gift of God. Jesus Christ, too, is a gift of God. But Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is all in all. Everything is in him. Everything is in him. So if you need a, a, a gift, you must ask. The Bible is not talking about Christ. He's talking about gift that God can give. And salvation. God gives salvation. It's a gift. It's a gift. Now, the second reading, when some people have given money, the, 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 the second Corinthians, some people have given money to, uh, to some, some other people to be taken care of. And when Paul was praying, he said that, it is God himself who gives bread or he gives seed to the sower. It is God who gives seed to the sower. So the money that you have, it is God who gives you. Hallelujah. Amen. And then when you use it well, when you use it well, he said, these people, they look for you, they want to see you because you have done these things to them. And listen to what he said. He says, this Grace in you. When you read 
the, 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 the last sentence. He said, this grace in you was given to, uh, to you by God. Read it, read it, read it and see. I want you to understand. Don't say what you want. He's not talking about Jesus Christ. The indescribable gift, he said, it's not about Christ. Read it, read it, let's read it. Let's read it. I want you to understand it very, very well. Now, he said, uh, the, the, the verse 14, the second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14, he said, and by their prayer for you, who long for you because of the exceeding grace, listen, the exceeding grace of God in you. So the grace of giving, the grace of giving is a gift from God. When you are in the church and you cannot give, it means you lack that grace. And you must ask. You must ask. I'm going to show you why. There are some people in the church, now their ears are outside. Listening to this, 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 this false teachings that ties is this and ties is that and that. No, Paul is saying that even the grace of giving is given by God. Otherwise, you cannot give. You cannot give. And then the last one he told them was that this grace that God has given you, he said, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. What gift is he talking about? The gift of giving. That grace that was given to them so that they were able to give to uh, 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 care for those who lack something. That grace is a gift. It's a gift. Now, when you give money, you take your time to read uh, that person. When you give, and that's three things. When you read that, the first one is that people can now thank God. They will, God, they will give God thanksgiving. They say, oh God, I thank you. That giving you it. They will glorify God. God. Because, look, sometimes some people may be too poor that they even may not have what they can eat. So when you have that grace of giving and you see that person and you give him 10 euros, what is that person going to say? I thank God. Otherwise today, me and my children do not eat. So in the first place, they give glory to God. And the next one is that I, that person who gave, hmm, if it were you who gave, they will say, oh God, bless this man. God bless this woman. That's the second thing they will do. God, oh, uh, we say in our, uh, in our language that they will pray for you. They will pray for you. When you have that grace, when you have that gift, and you give, people will pray for you. And that the seed that God gives will be multiplied. Amen. Amen. The third one is that, that what you gave will make somebody good. Mm -hmm. The money you gave, the food you gave, the clothes you gave, is going to serve somebody. And that person also will have peace in his life. I remember I've been saying this that one time I went to Ghana. And I parked my car in front of my, my, my house. I was inside the house. When I heard that, uh, a lady was asking the people who were there that, brothers, whose, whose car is this? Whose car is this? There was some, some, some masons, they were working there. And the woman saw that these masons cannot buy this car. So, <laughs> so they don't have money. So, instead of asking them that, is this your car? He, he was asking, whose car is this? And I want to know whose car is this. So I heard it. And uh, I, I, I really came out. I said, lady, it's for me. You said anything wrong? He said, no. But brother, please, from morning to this time, I've not eaten. I don't have any. Then she opened the stomach to Oh, look, look at my stomach. From morning to this time, I said, oh, God. Oh, God. I went home and then came out of something and give it to the, to the woman. And you know what the woman was saying? Look, let, 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 let him demonstrate. Do I have money in my pocket? I think so. Let me see. The woman was looking at the money like this. Oh, oh God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, bless this man for me. Oh, God. Then she started, up. God, I thank you. God, bless him for me. Oh God, then I said to myself, I could have done better than this room. 
I, I gave her the one, the, the green one. Tell, tell the city of them. Ah, well, I've given her 20, but that's a very good. Now, what do you give when you give? People will glorify God, and people will pray for you. But it's a gift from God. It's a gift of God. And Paul calls, calls this gift an indescribable gift. People who can give. People who can give. People who can give. Now, when we ask, look at this one, Jonah. When Jonah was in trouble, when God sent him and he refused to go, we all know the story. Say, he was swallowed by a whale. And the whale sent Jonah down below the sea. But when he came into his senses, he began to ask a gift from God. God, save me. God, give me life. God, please don't kill me. And God heard the prayer. Even though the whale was down below the sea, he, he, he Jonah was in the belly of the whale. And the, the whale was down below the sea. When he asked that God should save him, God heard it. Our God is not death. Wherever you are, and whatever your problem, when you begin to ask, he will give. I pray that you will know the gift of God. And then you ask for all perfect gifts and a good gift they come from him. And when he prayed, the Bible says God instructed the whale to come up. Come up. Don't lie at the, at the bottom there. Come up. And the whale obeyed. Then God instructed again, swim very fast. Take this man who is in your belly. Take him to the shore. When you read the vomit him out and let him go away. Somebody who has been in the belly of a way, how can you live? Had it not been the power of God? Brothers, all gift and the proper gift and the good gift and the perfect gift, they come from the Lord. So if you want to live a healthy life, ask the Lord, Lord, keep me healthy. Ask Him. I would say, He will give. He will give. Whatever, whatever you need, God has everything. Do you know that? God has everything. Or oh, you don't believe that? God has everything. Now when you read Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 13, he said that even the strength that we used to work is from God. The strength. If you sleep and in the morning you are able to wake up and go to work, this strength is from God. And it's a gift. Because not so many people can wake up in the morning and go to work. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 13. Not many people can wake up in the morning and go to work. Even though yesterday night they were strong. They were strong. You talk to him. But this morning he couldn't go to work. So if you were able to go, it is a gift. Amen. That's all good and perfect gift come from the Lord. So what we are telling you this afternoon is that this God is a loving God. Amen. And he is ready to give. When we ask, James says, even when you lack knowledge, when you lack wisdom, ask him and he will give. I pray that we shall stretch forth our hands, pray to him and ask. Whatever we ask him, he will give. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just, just ask in faith. This same man says that if you ask without faith, you will just like uh, the storm of the sea, going to and from. You will receive nothing. But pray with faith that Lord God, Yesterday, somebody was here testifying that a mother was sick. And then she came to the church, took money. She took money, put it in an envelope, and prayed unto God that, God, I know you are a healer. And you are a doctor. You can heal every disease. My mother is sick. She, she is coming to you. Heal her. I know you have done it. So this is her uh, uh, hospital bed. Yesterday he said it here. This is her hospital bed. And then she put the money in the bowl. Look at this faith. And the next time she had a message, her mother was okay. Her mother was all right. Pray in faith. Ask. Ask for good faith. Ask for good gift. For the Lord is ready to give. The Lord is ready to give. And as you are ready to give also, God will cause his gift to work in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't listen to this story that people are saying. 
they just want you to accompany them to hell. <laughs> it is the truth about the whole matter. They want you to accompany them to hell, but refuse it. Tell them for hell, I will not go. Yeah, somebody told me a story that somebody was dead and he, uh, buried in a cemetery and they, they built this big house upon the the, 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 the cliff. And then they have written, uh, is it go with me also? You go with me. Uh, will you go with me? And somebody looked at me and said, I will go with you. I don't know where you are. I will go with you. I don't know where you are going. Why do I have to follow you? Hallelujah. Now, people want to go to hell. They want to go to hell. So they are propounding all sorts of theories. They are saying, now, the reason, one of the reasons why James wrote this thing was that there were false teachers. False teachers. Teaching all, all sorts of things. And said they come from the Bible. It doesn't come from the Bible. Paul is saying that that gift God has given to you is a grace that even when you give, when you give, that, that gift alone, he says it is indescribable. We can't describe it. This afternoon I pray that God will give you that gift Amen. so that the blessing of God will open you. Amen. When you are sick, you'll be able to heal you. Amen. When you need money, ask him. Amen. When you need salvation, ask him. Amen. When you need uh, deliverance, ask him. Amen. He is all in all. Yes. He can do everything. Amen. This afternoon, what I am saying is that our God is a loving God. Amen. That he is ready to give. Amen. Whatever you need, he has it. And we fulfill his promise. In the Lord bless you. Shine on me.